My name is Katherine Kwan and I'm a developer advocate on the developer relations team here at Google. Today I'll be talking about Google Play Services. For those of you who don't know what it is, it's a way for us to provide new APIs to developers on a regular basis that will work on devices running the latest uh, operating system all the way back to Gingerbread. It contains great APIs such as location, games, Wallet, G+, and much, much more. You can leverage all of these to create amazing apps for your users. To use these APIs, you can access them through the Google Play Services app, which is delivered to users' devices through Google Play and updated automatically. With the most recent release of the app, we're moving to a new model for how developers like you can interact more consistently with these services. Don't worry, though. If you've previously integrated with Google Play Services, nothing changes for your existing apps in the wild. The binary interface to the Google Play Services app remains the same, so previously compiled apps will continue to work. In today's step byte, I'll cover why we need this change, what it is and how to implement it, and step through an example together with you. So let's begin with the basics. To use all the great APIs provided by the Google Play Services app, you need to first open up a client connection to that process. To do this, you include the Google Play Services SDK in your app and call into the SDK to set up the connection. Now, there used to be a different client for each service, such as the Plus client, Games client, App State client, and so on. To use three services, you would have to create three clients and manage independent connections with slightly different nuances. Fortunately, with this new and simplified interaction model, you'll only need a single Google API client to connect to the Google Play Services app. When you set up the client, you specify whichever APIs you want to use. This greatly improves the developer experience because you only have one client to worry about connecting and handling callbacks for. Let's talk about how to implement it by seeing some examples of how you would initialize the Google API client. This shows you how to add the Wallet API and specify an account. This shows the Plus API in scope. This shows the Drive API in scope. And now the real difference is that now you can add multiple APIs and scopes easily, which is a huge win in terms of saving you development time and complexity. So once you have initialized a client with the APIs you need, you have to connect and implement callbacks for the single Google API client as seen here. After you have a connected Google API client, how do you access the methods in the API? We can look at the case of games as an example. The previous model involved calling into the games client as the main entry point to get things like achievements and leaderboards, but that is now being deprecated. So should we call it on Google API client because that's the replacement? Well, we can't because it's not coupled to any service, and we don't want it to know about all the methods that each service could potentially provide. Instead, the answer is to use the new entry points that we've created. In the games case, the main entry point is now the games class, which offers static methods to read or write data. You can access game achievements through the games.achievements class, or leaderboards through the games.leaderboards class, and so on. Every time you make a call to an API, you must pass the Google API client object as well. This serves as a reminder that you need an open connection to the Google Play Services app in order for the request to be handled. For more detail, you can check out the documentation or sample games apps using the provided link. Now, after you call an API, we've standardized it so that you get a pending result back. Pending result is typed so that you can expect the answer that you're waiting for to be of type result. You can wait synchronously for the result as seen here, or you can set an async callback to notify you later when the result is ready. Result is an interface that the services use to return you the data you've requested, and it has a get status method. The status object tells you information about whether or not the result was successful and uses a standard set of status codes. Then you can proceed and use the result. To review everything we went over, let's walk through an example. We are fetching the visible people in a user's G circles, which can be useful, for example, to create a social experience in an app. First, we set up the Google API client and set the plus API scope and connection callbacks. Then we implement the callback methods for connection succeeded, suspended, or failed. The connection could fail because it requires user intervention, for example, to choose an account, then an intent would be returned in the connection result, and you should allow the user to resolve the problem and connect again. Next, we call connect and disconnect on the Google API client. As soon as the connection is successful, we can fetch the information our app needs by calling a static method in the API, which is plus.peopleapi.loadvisible. 
and we pass in the Google API client. On the pending result that gets returned, we set a callback because we want the result asynchronously. In the callback, we will receive a load people result, which is of type result, so we can get the status and check that the status code is successful. If all is well, then we can obtain the list of people that we're looking for from the result. To see the full example, go to the list visible people activity.java class in the samples in the SDK. In conclusion, we are moving towards a consistent model of how to interact with Google Play services. See the documentation for more details. Existing services like Games, AppState, Wallet, and G Plus have already converted to the new model, and more will be coming soon. New services like Chromecast and Drive are already working with the Google API client. So try out Google Play Services Day and see how it can enhance your app. Thank you for watching and see you next time.